delegation from the Syrian regime has arrived in Geneva to take part in the peace talks. The group will meet UN envoy Stefan de Mistura. On Thursday, the main Syrian opposition group, the HNC, announced for the first time its willingness to form a transitional government that would also include members of the Syrian regime. Well, let's pick up that point uh, with uh, Basma Momani. She's a senior fellow at the Center for International Governance Innovation. Basma, many thanks for joining us. So yesterday, the Syrian opposition, the HNC group, said they were willing to work with members of the Syrian regime in a transitional government. They even went so far to say the military of the two sides could join together in some form. Do you see this as a positive step in terms of the peace negotiations? Well, it's a huge compromise on behalf of the opposition. Uh, and really, I think it's a step forward in discussions. Now, of course, it will be uh, incumbent on now the government to really respond with something in kind. Now, the opposition has agreed, as you said, to take perhaps members of the Assad government into a new transitional government, but with the caveat that they don't have blood on their hands. Now, of course, that's going to be a challenge to find anybody inside the Assad regime who doesn't have blood on his hands. Also, of course, the red line there is absolutely not to accept Assad himself. That is something that the, the opposition has been very clear about. But of course, we continue to hear from the Assad regime that that is a red line for them and they will not accept discussions about a transitional government that don't have at least the option of including Assad. Indeed. And we had uh, Syrian elections this week as well. So how do you think this will play out? Well, the Syrian elections are really a sham and quite uh, disturbing in, uh, I think, the government's effort to somehow suggest that there's some normalcy throughout uh, Syria to even have these kinds of elections. But how this will play out, I think, will be uh, a great deal of back and forth. Of course, de Mistruda wants to have something positive to say. And this, again, compromise on behalf of the HNC is a big step forward. We'll need to see what happens, not so much, I think, in Damascus, but in Moscow. Will the Russians say to the Assad regime, look, we want you to also suggest that, yes, let's talk beyond Assad. I do believe that the, uh, uh, the Russian government is getting tired of the situation and perhaps might be interested in seeing not necessarily uh, people outside of the regime. They still want regime insiders in a transitional government, but they're willing to let go of Assad if they can appoint their very own, another uh, favorite uh, lackey to basically take his place. Now, we've also seen escalating fighting in Aleppo, which puts the ceasefire at risk. How is that going to play into the talks this week? Well, you know, so much of the, uh, not so much ceasefire, but cessation of hostilities, which is quite different, um, is isolated to certain towns and areas that doesn't include Al Nusra Front. And much of where the fighting is today in Aleppo uh, is a part of what has been controlled by Al Nusra Front. Now, the real challenge in all of this is that Al Nusra Front is also intermingled with many other uh, more moderate rebel groups and trying to sort of delineate uh, the zones where the cessation of hostilities apply can be very, I think, murky. So this is obviously not a good thing for the cessation of hostilities agreement. But overall, and many analysts like myself and others are really quite surprised at how the cessation of hostilities has held on and has allowed a really important reprieve for many of those opposition areas, and not to mention, as we often see on Fridays, demonstrations against the regime returning to the streets as a result of the cessation of hostilities. Basma, really good to speak to you. Basma Momani there from the Center of International Governance Innovation. Many thanks.